What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you're all doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's 4-0 win over St. Patrick's Athletic. Before we get into today's video, I'd like to request that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you are subscribing, please do hit the bell notification icon as that helps you keep up to date with my videos. Right, so this preseason game was an interesting one and it ultimately an entertaining one. There was four goals, so that's a positive. Two in the first half, two in the second. In the first half, one was scored by Mason Mount and one was scored by Emerson. And in the second half, Giroud got himself a lovely brace. Now, in both these halves, like the last preseason game, Frank Lampard deployed a completely different 11 and a completely different system. So in this review, I'll kind of be reviewing both of the halves it's kind of like individual games I guess right so the first half was incredibly intriguing for me if you'd watched my video I did on Frank Lampard's midfield options a couple of days ago you'd know how excited I got over the idea of Frank Lampard playing a 4-4-2 diamond and you know what he played a 4-4-2 diamond in this half so actually in the two pre-season games Lampard's played he's played all three formations that I talked about that was a good video. Go and watch that video. So let's take a look at this formation. In goal, we had Willy Caballero. In the left back position, we had Emerson. The centre back pairing was between Tamori and Luis. And we had Zappa Costa at right back. So, what did the diamond look like? The exciting part. Well, it looked like this we had Jorginho at the base of the diamond. We had Mason Mount playing on the right of the diamond. Kovacic on the left of the diamond. And Barkley playing in the number 10 at the tip of the diamond. And in front of all those lot was exciting and intriguing strike partnership uh, Tammy and Mishy Abraham and Bashway. so I'm gonna talk about the individual player performances in just a second but I just want to talk about the formation quickly now 442 diamond is a really difficult one to play in the Premier League I think for Chelsea because of the winger situation we've got two good senior wingers in Pedro and Willian and we've obviously got two new exciting talented prospects in Pulisic and Callum Hudson at doing and in this system there are no wingers but just it did look very very good there was a really good team synergy it looks incredibly functional certainly for these um this, these players on the pitch but it's just so accommodating of those great talented midfielders we've got and often games football matches are won and lost in the midfield so if you can control a game in the midfield by applying such a dominating and exciting diamond like frank did in this game it's good. <laughs> in the first half, there was really good chemistry between this lot. Again, particularly coming from the midfield. Really fast combinations, good passes, and good attacking phases of play. It looked like it just kept coming. Um, although there was only two goals scored, it looked like there could have been a lot more. And the two goals that was scored in this game were from Mason Mount and Emerson. The first goal from Mason Mount was a really lovely little finish. A lovely little assist from Kovacic as well. Passed it in. Nice, neat, tidy finish from Mason Mount early in the game. The second goal comes Coming from Emerson, a low shot from probably about 20 yards out. Um, just, you know, there's a phase of play where the ball's moving around. It was a matter of time before someone wanted to hit it, and it was Emerson, and it was a good goal. So I'm going to talk about all the players, and I want to start really by the strike partnership of Mishi and Tammy. So, a really intriguing strike partnership, and you know what? They kind of complement each other really well, in theory, and actually in practice as well. Obviously, neither of them scored a goal, but Mishi probably should have had two or three. Um, Mishi's more of the hold-up play guy. He's really good at the He's obviously big and strong. He's really good at holding the ball up and getting a pass off. Um, he's good at popping off loads and loads of shots. And he put in a few good passes to reach Tammy. Now, Tammy was more of a cloak and dagger. He was making the runs, uh, running the channels and pulling people out. He also got a couple of shots away as well. And he put in a lot of decent passes to Mishi and others. Batshuayi really impressed me in the first game. And he impressed me in this half as well. He um, was basically... Not always trying to get shots off, he was still making passes, like I said, he found Abraham a few times, but he was composed in the 18-yard box. That's where he should live, Batshuayi, basically. Like, he doesn't concede possession in a silly way. Like, there was a moment where he did a couple of chops, like, almost that like you see Wilfred Zaha do, and then he popped off a really good shot. I think he forced, like, three saves in that half and also hit the crossbar. 
Um, so he's really unlucky not to score goals and a very good performance from Batshuayi. Not to denigrate Tammy Abraham, he was very good also, probably not quite as good as Michi Batshuayi, but although they were looking to find each other early on in the half, they probably both became a little too selfish in the latter stages of that half, but you know, put that down to pre-season and just desperately wanting to impress the gaffer. But they looked really functional together and they looked really good in front of that diamond midfield as well, so if you think Maybe if Frank looks to deploy a diamond midfield next season, he'll be choosing those two strikers and not one of them and Giroud. They work well together. Early days, but I'm talking about in this game, they look like they could work well together, at least. Okay, so the midfield diamond, let's talk a little bit about that. The exciting part of this game for me, so they were quite different. Jorginho was at the base of the diamond. So in terms of occupying the space, not too different to his Regista role underneath Sari, but different license. You can tell he's been given a more liberal role because, you know what, he was putting a good accurate long balls over the top. Now he didn't do that under Sari because Sari wants you to play short, low passes to pull the opposition out. You can tell Lampard said to Jorginho, put some balls over the top mate if you fancy it. And he did, accurate long balls. Very, very good Jorginho, looked comfortable, defensively sound enough. Didn't necessarily set the world on fire, but he was very, very functional and impressive for me. And I think he absolutely could play at the base of a diamond there comfortably. Kovacic on the left-hand side was very, very impressive for me. Apart from getting a nice assist to Mason Mount, he was the best player on that pitch today in terms of carrying the ball. If, if it's dribbling and moving, for me, you know, I want to say maybe someone like Loftus-Cheek's obviously very, very good, but now Eden Hazard's gone. He's the one player that sort of looks like Eden Hazard when he's on the ball, when he's carrying it. I'm not saying he's got the offensive prowess of Eden Hazard, because he hasn't, but he's built like Hazard physically, so maybe that's why they're so similar. He's so good at picking up the ball and dribbling it, and you feel like he's held onto it for too long, and maybe he does sometimes, but that doesn't mean he's going to concede a turnover of possession. He can release it to a teammate. So very, very good, and for me, he offered something completely different to everyone else in that midfield, so that made him very important, really, Kovacic. Now, Mount and Barkley, although they're playing, Barkley's playing in the 10, and Mount was playing on the right, they actually were quite similar. They both had really good games. They were sort of doing the quick combination play, like the one-touch release, um, sort of niggling in and out of people and basically advancing forward. Um, Mount obviously had the great goal. Barkley was probably unlucky to not get a goal as well. He forced a few saves, um, as well as... Uh, he had a great free kick as well that was saved. So they both generally had very good games. And because this diamond functioned so well in this 45 minutes, it offered sort of everyone a chance to get involved. And everyone in the midfield looked very, very good. And, you know, so Barkley and Mount, very good games in my opinion. The back four looks really comfortable together. Um, Emerson got his goal, but he was a standout performer for me. He did do some good defensive contributions. Um, he got up and down quite well. He put in some really good cross for the strikers and generally Emerson looked very very good. Louise had a good game he showed he was one of the sort of senior figures in that centre-back pairing or certainly even the back line except he did have one moment when he went into midfield and conceded possession and Tamori and Mount had to track back and cover for him which was like a silly moment from Louise but he compensated by doing some really entertaining stuff in the 35th minute where he was juggling the ball over the opponent and got it forward so a lovely entertaining move for the fans but yeah both centre backs really good Louise like Jorginho licensed to put long balls over the top for the running strikers it's a very good apart from his one silly preseason mistake and Zappa Costa on the right back position pretty good in both games he's been pretty good he gets up and down quite quickly and he carries the ball well he sort of progresses the ball forward quite well um, you know not a Galactico right back but a good conventional right back but you know out of the fullbacks, Emerson was the one that was shining today. And Willy Caballero and Gold made a couple of saves, but he really didn't have to do that much. But for me, he was decent. We know he's a decent keeper. Not really else to say. All in all, there's a lot of positives to reflect on from that half for Frank Lampard. And it'll be really interesting to see if he persists with that 4-4-2 diamond. But that was the end of the first half, and in came the second. Like previously stated, Frank Lampard came in with a whole new 11 players and a new formation. He went with the 4-2-3-1 formation which works better than his 4-3-3 last game so 
I, I didn't know what to think. I was sort of sad to see the 4-4-2 diamond go, but I was intrigued to see how these players would play in a 4-2-3-1. And these players were Young coming in goal with Alonso at left back and Azpilicueta at right back. The centre-back partnership was Christensen and Zuma. Interestingly, the deep midfield engine room positions were occupied by Bakayoko. That's not interesting. But Billy Gilmore, which I found an intriguing one for as for me, he's like an attacking midfielder number 10, and he was playing in a deep two. Hmm. The three attacking midfielders consisted of Kennedy at left wing position, Pedro at right wing position, and Casey Palmer in the number 10. Behind, lone striker Olivier Giroud. Right, so generally this half was less exciting than the first. Now, there was an equal amount of goals, but it didn't feel as dominating as the first half. Now, that could be put down to both personnel and um, formation, but... There was sort of slow parts and they just didn't have the drive and entertainment of the first half. At the beginning of the game, the three attacking players behind Giroud did a few good combinations early doors that kind of excited. And Billy Gilmore was dictating the game very well from that deep position. So there was a few exciting moments there, but that dominating essence of the first half had suddenly gone. And it wasn't... <laughs> It just wasn't as entertaining. Before I talk about player performances, there's one interesting thing that I picked up on that just seemed to be exclusive to these two players. Billy Gilmore and Pedro switched positions a lot. Now, usually if a player goes out of position, another guy might cover, but this looked like they had genuine license to switch, which was interesting because obviously you can imagine Billy Gilmore playing that more advanced role, even if it's out wide. That Pedro coming into that deep position was a bit peculiar, but then again, I suppose he's played wing back before, so maybe he's a bit defensively savvy. So that was an interesting one. Right, so I got to start with Olivier Giroud when I talk about players. He was ultimately the man of this half, in my opinion. He, he, he's often not doing exciting stuff when it comes to pressing, or he's very good at combination play, but he's not always involved. But you know what? He really was impressive this half. Obviously, he scored both goals in the half, and his first one was very, very good. It was a cross in from Kennedy across his body, and he hits it first time with his left foot and puts it in the corner. Very, very good, instinctive, elite finish from an elite striker, ultimately. Is Giroud an elite striker? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to say he's an elite striker. Very, very dominant in the box as well, but you'd expect that from a World Cup winner and someone of his experience and physicality. He's always been very, very dominating in the box. But for me, Giroud's moment of the half was his second goal. As the opposition were trying to play out of their half, he intercepted a ball took possession and started driving forward. Now Giroud isn't fast, okay? He can't dribble fast with possession and he was alone here, he had no backup. So he dribbled towards, you know, multiple defenders or the two centre backs and he saw no support was coming. And again, he's not quick, so he can't dart past him. He just kept going forward, going forward, going forward and used smarts over speed, got a little bit of width on the left, whipped it with his left foot to the far post and scored a great, great goal. All the work done by himself from turning over possession, carrying it forward, and then just finding a finish out of nowhere. So, brilliant. And for me, this game was important for Giroud. He's showing Frank Lampard that, look, if you're gonna play a 4-3-3, maybe, or a 4-2-3-1, if you're gonna play a lone striker, you should probably be playing me, mate, because as intriguing as the strike partnership from the younger Tammy and Mishy was, the experience of that lone striker role from Giroud just makes so much sense and he looked really, really good. I mean, he looked great in the Europa League final as well. He's just sort of found a bit of form in the last few months. For the attacking mids in behind Giroud, Kennedy was decent enough. He obviously got the assist. He did a couple of good combinations. Didn't really do anything too exciting, but perhaps no one really did in this half apart from maybe Giroud and one other. For me, he looked a lot better in the left wing role rather than a left back role. So maybe the best out of that three behind Giroud, but not amazing. Pedro was still really decent on the right hand side he looked a bit more like himself um, or as good as we know Pedro can be for me he's such a known quantity it's difficult to talk about him because you know he'll come up with the goods every now and again as for Casey Palmer in the number 10 very disappointing for me he had a couple of good moments early doors but he lost possession he flopped a few times he was weak in possession and he just didn't have that creativity that you'd require from a number 10 playing in just behind the striker right in the engine room Bakayoko disappointing for me he didn't do much made a couple of interceptions but other than that didn't really excite broke down a couple of phases of attacking play he didn't move fast enough he even passed the ball just 
off the pitch at one point, no one was there. Difficult for me to see how Bakayoko is going to feature as an important player next season for Frank Lampard. If PSG are genuinely in for him, i will you know. Billy Gilmore, however, was really, really good and showed his versatility in that position next to Bakayoko, I guess the sort of eight, eight position. Um, he obviously interchanged with Pedro, but he was very good. He dictated the game early. He did fade towards the latter part of that half. Um, he was impressive, not as impressive as the previous game, but he showed different elements of his game here. I saw him make a really clean, good tackle and win possession back, which is nice to see from, I guess, an attacking midfielder. So for me, he was a, you know, a good. Right, the defence, both Zuma and Christensen were serviceable in this game. They didn't have much to do. Although Chelsea weren't amazing in this half, they still weren't threatened so much. So these guys didn't have much to do. Probably out of the two, Zuma was slightly more impressive, but they weren't tested enough for me to assess them properly. But I can assess properly the fullback, starting with Aspilicueta. He's not an attacking fullback, and because this game was often Chelsea attacking, you didn't really see him when he, he's, he was a passenger, because when he doesn't get forward well, and when he does, he doesn't combine well. I just didn't really notice Espelicueta much. He's really good at one-on-one -on -one defending. We didn't really have to do any of that in this game, so you didn't get to demonstrate that quality. So, a bit anonymous, sadly, for Espelicueta. Marcus Alonso, however, was very visible and for me very very poor. This for me just further demonstrates how he's not a conventional left back. He likes to stay forward but you know what even when he was staying forward his combination play was poor, he was attacking the wrong space, he obviously is a very slow player and can't track back to defend and his chemistry with the left over the players on the left hand side of the pitch was poor. Now Chelsea fans do hate on Marcus Alonso and obviously he's got really positive footballing elements as a footballer but in a system like this as a left back it is very very difficult to make the case for Marcus Alonso starting for Frank Lampard's Chelsea especially after talking about how good Emerson was in that first half Alonso just broke things down and he doesn't offer anything defensively. As for coming in goal, I can't really say anything about him apart from he stood there rather well. Right, that's enough of the formations. So the big talking points from this game were a lot in the first half essentially. The formation, how it works and how it allowed the players in the midfield to shine really well and how it also allowed the striker partnership between Mishi and Tammy to, to do bits essentially. It kind of accommodated loads of chances for all those players to do things on the ball and do things they do well whereas the second half didn't really show that at all it was sort of sluggish at times and like I said lacked team synergy the only issue with this 4-4-2 diamond is I'm not sure if it will work well in the Premier League and what that's going to mean for the wingers you know I won't necessarily cry for the super senior wingers like Willian and Pedro that are getting on a bit now but you think of Callum hudson Adoy. you think of Pulisic, would they have to train as a second striker, would they play a midfield or as a 10, but this midfield diamond accommodates all great midfielders, which Chelsea have a lot of, and it just, you know, it doesn't, you don't really think about these wingers, so I think the Chelsea will have to use wingers in the Premier League, and then if Chelsea use wingers, it looks like they should be looking at Olivier Giroud, because as a lone striker, very, very good, although... I, I made the case and often did for Tammy as the nine for Chelsea because he's a Chelsea Academy product There's a lot of romance there and he's used to scoring goals and he's young and the you know Morris and Lampard you reckon would fancy him, but if you're gonna require hold-up play and Experience Giroud and if you need a bit of hold-up play um I mean, to me, it looks like Michy Bachoy's hold-up play is a lot better than Tammy Abraham. Tammy Abraham can run the channels, but if you want someone to hold on to that ball in the box, Michy's making a very strong case for it to be the young striker that can do that. Anyway, pre-season rolls on, so that's going to end my video today on this 4-0 win against St. Patrick's Athletic. If you've enjoyed the video guys, please do like the video and why not subscribe to my channel if you are new. Um, if you want to support this channel, you can become a patron for $1 a month and gain access to exclusive video content that I'll provide to patrons once a month. So $1 a month, that's nothing guys. And also you get to chat to me about football on there if you fancy that. Anyway guys, I'm going to keep rolling so take it easy, enjoy the football and I'll see you later. Way so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck.
In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be 